Okay, hi everybody. I this is Fanferno calling. I am recording this in Santa Cruz, California. I was hoping I was going to be with Deborah this weekend teaching, and I had some personal matters that needed to attention, and I could not make the trip. I apologize for that. I was really looking forward to it. So I'm going to just do some talking about uh, what it is I do with the pen. I pretty much use uh, the pen or another hot tool all the time. I own about a hundred brushes, but I don't use them very often, mostly just to cover things with medium if I or paint if I need to, and I'll show you when it is that I do stuff like this. So I'm going to start by showing you a few paintings that I've made with the pen. This one is called Nimbus, and this is a thank you card that I made for my sister-in-law, and it's six by eight. Nimbus is eight by eight. These are all pretty small. This is another thank you card I made. This is six by eight as well, and this monster is a three foot tall uh, cylinder that is uh, encaustic on plaster that I made entirely with the pen. I hope you can see it. There's a lot of detail in it and I have had a blast making these pieces. And then, oh, and then these are some heads that I made uh, on uh, pieces, plaster pieces that I made by covering balloons with plaster. And this is a really uh, easy thing to do. Um, and here's another one, and I'm actually gonna do some work on this one. Uh, and show you what I do because all these white spaces on here are not filled in and uh, I'm gonna fill these in with red paint. So that's um, how it goes for me. And um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the paint. This paint that looks like a muffin is paint that I've already mixed with medium. It's about two parts medium, one part paint, and then, and I melt it all in an electric wok, and then I mold it into these muffins, and I use them for painting. Then the other way that I do this is I take uh, paint. This is a piece of red from uh, Encausticos. It's one of their sticks. I think they're called hot sticks. Hot sticks, okay. And um, and what I do is I mix that with the medium. This is medium that I make called clairvoyant medium. And um, it's a little bit sticky sometimes. Different paints have a different uh, stickiness depending on what pigment is used and so if you don't mix it with medium it can clog up the pen okay so this is uh, how I do it I just put in some red and then I run it through the medium a little bit and then it's pretty good and then I just this is right on the plaster and I just smush it on the on the plaster with the pen just like this. Um, I will say that I've been doing this for a long time, about 10 years, and it does take some practice, but now I can cover a whole piece with wax with no trouble at all and I'll have to fix this where I blob some on the turquoise. But So I just keep doing this. You can just keep 
using the same space and just do it like this. I will tell you that the plaster really loves the wax. It sucks it right in. If you do this this way, there's no need to fuse it. It's fusing into the plaster as it's going on because the pen is heated. Okay, so now this, see, it's a going on a little bit more difficultly. So I'm going to pick up some medium and then it just becomes very easy. Red, medium. And red and medium. Red and medium. Now, the pieces that I make are usually kind of lumpy. I don't do a lot of smoothing out on these when I'm making my forms. I tend to appreciate the lumpiness of them and feel like it gives uh, a little bit more um, texture and soul to the pieces. So I don't do too much um, smoothing out. Um, but there's a lot of ways you can do that. Um, just from the get-go of when you're putting on the plaster strips. Or you can take Plaster of Paris and uh, go over it with Plaster of Paris once you uh, have the dried form. If you decide you want it to be smoother, get some Plaster of Paris. Um, Learn how to mix the Plaster of Paris. There's an excellent video online that's done by uh, a woman named Lynn Tadaro. And she has a really good, she's a sculptor. She has a really good video that she made for her students at San Jose State um, about how to work with Plaster of Paris, which is uh, a little bit difficult if you don't know what to do. And I can tell you that by experience. I just assumed that I'd get some water, dump it in the plaster of Paris, and I'd be all set. And the truth is, is that it's a little bit more complicated than that. And I strongly recommend that you watch the video by Lynn Todaro. And so this is, um, you know, how to work on the plaster, which is a direct thing. Now, if you're working on a panel, it's not this simple, okay? So first I'm gonna show you how um, I go about cleaning out this pen. I take some paper towels. These don't require fancy paper towels like Viva's. You can just use these. These come from Costco. And um, I just wipe it out. And then I go into a cube of medium. That flaky stuff that some people like to use is not very effective for this. Okay, but you just go like this and now it's filled with medium and you wipe it out again and it is basically clean now and you can use another color without ruining what you're doing. 
Okay, so here's another piece that I've been working on. I've just kind of been doodling away, which I tend to do sometimes. And, um, and just making a piece with lots of little uh, freeform dots um, in different formations. This is a piece of paint that is compromised by the fact that I wasn't always using a clean pen. I confess, but I just want to show you what happens when you do. This turquoise is from Hilla Evans turquoise paint and it was mixed into a muffin form, uh, mixing it with medium. So um, you can do that either way you want. And then I just draw these little circles on here like this. And I just keep going, making little circles. Um, some people freak out that I'm so obsessive compulsive about this, but I find when I work on it that if I turn on some good music or listen to a book, I can do repetitive work for a long time without getting too bored. And I find it to be very meditative and kind of an out of body experience. And I really enjoy it. So this is what I do over and over and over again. And then I'm just going to keep going a little bit. Just keep going. When I first took, when I first learned about encaustic, I learned about it from a teacher named Brenda Louie at San Francisco Art Institute where I was doing a post-baccalaureate degree. I um, fell in love with the idea of working with wax as soon as I saw it but she didn't teach us properly. And so I fiddled around for a long time trying to figure out how to do it. Um, and sometime while I was trying to figure it out, Joanne's book came out. I And I found out that my friend Daniela Wolf was teaching encaustic classes out of her studio in Santa Cruz. I took a class and I felt like the clumsiest, most ridiculous person in the whole world and there was no way I was ever going to be able to proceed. One of the reasons why was because I already had a love affair with making dots and I could not figure out for the life of me how to make them. And at the end of the class I said to her, I feel like I failed. I can't do this and I've been trying to figure out how to make dots through the whole class and I just cannot figure it out. And I'm not gonna be able to work with wax even though I've wanted to for a really long time. Daniela went into her supply closet and she pulled out a pen uh, that looked very much like this green one. And she plugged it in, heated it up, and she said, well, will this work for you? And so I'm just going to take this for a sec. And she took the uh, panel. This one's a practice panel that I use. And she just started going like this. And... In this five seconds of watching her go like this, making little tiny dots, which is what I wanted to do, my whole life as an artist changed. And I just have been kind of obsessed with using the pen ever since then.
or other hot tools, which I'm going to show you. But see how easy this is. I, I think one of the things about wax that, that we all learn is that everybody finds their own way with the wax. They just keep finding their way with the wax, and this was mine. And once I did this, I just kept going, and I've been a really happy user of encaustic paints ever since then. So that's that part. This is another muffin piece. So this one I actually made myself from black pigment from Sinopia Pigments. It's a color that's called Earth Black. So it's extremely organic. So I'll wipe that out and then I'll clean this out again. And I'll go back to this piece and I'll use this ice cold, which is a Hilla Evans color. And I'll just go back and fill this in with straight ice cold. which is not what I filled these in with. Those are filled in with regular white. I tend to mix my own white paint with white pigment. It's pretty easy. And I use titanium white, not um, zinc white, because zinc white tends to gunk up the wax and definitely gunks up the pen. So I make uh, white paint out of titanium white pigment. Another great color is the uh, raw titanium. It's called Titanium Buff. That's another paint you can make yourself. It's a really great color. And this is me repeating myself over and over and over again. So that's the first lesson. I, I hope you learned something. Thanks.